Hey now everybody, Jamie here, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at this fabulously cool little adventure game, Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the adventure game, clearly based on the 1980s movie. That is absolutely wonderful. And this is essentially a role-playing game, but it's kind and uh, different, it's, it's way different than any other role-playing game that you'll find out there. Everything you need for this role-playing game is here in this book. I'm talking all the encounters, NPCs, items, anything you need to do, and the components you need, because if you open her up here, you see there's a little slot built into it that holds the dice. <laughs> How cool is that? Uh, this production is actually uh, wonderful. Uh, it got the dust jacket here, which is neat, but look at how cool the actual book is. It looks like an old timey storybook. It is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, and opening her up, of course, it's just chocked full with amazing uh, artwork. Just perfect artwork that fits this specific theme uh, of the labyrinth so, so well. I just absolutely love everything about this book, just looking through it. So essentially, you're playing the movie here. Uh, you and everybody in your party has a reason that they need to find the Goblin King. Whether he stole something from you, he wronged you in some capacity, you're trying to find him, and you have to get through the labyrinth in 13 hours, or you lose the game. Literally, you lose the game if you don't make it through in 13 hours, and the game manages all of that stuff. So essentially, you will pick a character and you will create a race for him. Here we have the dwarves from the movie, you know, the fairies, the goblins, the humans, the knights of yore. You got the horned beast and, of course, the worms here. And making these characters is extremely easy. There's, there's no skills, no armor class, no combat bonus, no nothing. This game has something you're good at and something you're bad at. That's what your character has to use. So when you actually have to make dice rolls, the Goblin King, the dungeon master essentially, will tell you what the difficulty of the check is. You roll one die, if you meet or exceed, you succeed. If you're good at it, you roll two, pick the best. If you're bad at it, you roll two, pick the worst. You can get help or you have items that'll help you, but essentially that's how this works. The Goblin King on his end kind of runs the game for you, right? And how that works is you have to manage your progress and you have to manage your time. Like I said, you have to make it through the entire labyrinth and you have to make it through in 13 hours. And the way this works is you go, you start off the game in the beginning of the labyrinth here. So the first chapter is the stone walls. And you always start off on the number one encounter within. And you... Every encounter is a two-page spread. It's always a two-page spread. You have your, your sort of fluff text at the top here that you sort of read to the players or you can paraphrase it. And all of this information down here is what happens in this scene, what the players can interact with and things. So they go to it. They just start going wild in the scene and trying to figure out what they need to do. And depending on the puzzle they have to figure out, there's consequences at the bottom. If they succeed, very often it will say, update your progress. So what you do is you take the little red ribbon here and you put it in. Now, here's our progress. We've made it this far through the labyrinth and you will roll a die. And then you add the die to your progress, which we are on number one. So we move on to encounter six. And then you do this encounter. If you complete, you update your progress again. So if you finish number six, you take out the red ribbon and you've updated your progress to six and roll the die again. We're gonna move on to seven, eight, nine and counter nine. That's how you manage your progress. And also these consequences are gonna manage your time as well. If you fail at a scenario, you might lose an hour. If you decide that you want to, you fail at a scenario and you wanna to try to re-explore and do a different scenario that's nearby, you roll the die and if you ever roll a one, you lose an hour. Uh, so that's how you sort of manage the time. There are very few of the encounters that actually give you back time, uh, but you can get those. Uh, you also find items, you find NPCs throughout this whole thing, and of course the Goblin King is running this game. There's tons of charts in here that show you what random items you might find in the, in the scene. There's uh, random people that are around and they have personalities that you roll. There's goblins in here. Uh, just there's so much going on in this and it's such 
a simple concept. There are five different sections to the labyrinth. So the first one I mentioned was the stone walls. This little bookmark that it comes with actually mentions what they all are here. So we start off with the stone walls, then you move to the hedge maze, then you go to the land of Yore, then you go to the goblin city, and then into the castle where the goblin king is. If you make it through all of these by rolling that die and making progress and making sure that you get there before the 13 hours is up, you will meet the goblin king, you defeat him, and you win the game. If you run out of those hours throughout this whole thing, you fail, you lose. You have to start over with new characters back to the very beginning. And that goes to kind of some replayability here too, because depending on what you roll, you're going to have different encounters all the way through. And of course, each one of the first encounters of each one of the five sections is going to be the same. But if you have a good GM, a Goblin King, he can change it up. He can kind of mix up the, the encounters and make them a little different every time. This is such a cool concept. There's so much here to mind. I mean, I mean, even if you don't want to play this game with these mechanisms, these two page encounters, there are 99 of them in here, I believe they say. You could cannibalize all of these and throw them into your Dungeons and Dragons game as one-off encounters or a, or a labyrinth they have to get through in Dungeons and Dragons and integrate the D&D &D rules into this game. But for me, I kind of want to go through this just the way it is because the encounters are very tongue in cheek. They're very goofy and silly, kind of like Labyrinth, a Jim Henson production would be like a 1980s movie, fantasy movie. That's the way this is. And here's an example, a tiny spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear any of this stuff, spoilers from any of this stuff, go to this time code. Back at the beginning, there is an encounter that you get stuck in a pit. And there's no way out. There's no doors. There's no ladders. You can't climb the walls. You just can't get out of it. But there's piles of junk lying all around. And you can dig through the junk and you can find these cool little things. And one of the ways that you can get out of here is by finding this weird typewriter. And whenever you hit a key on the typewriter, it yells out, A it. Or if you hit the B key, it, it says B it. If you hit the X, it says exit. And the thing will start to rattle and bang and blow up and blow a hole in the wall and you can get out and move on through the labyrinth. That's one of the small, tiny little puzzles and one of a number of ways you can get out of this pit. But it's that kind of thing throughout this whole thing. There's no fighting and combat and going into like moving miniatures around a board. It's all about using your wits and trying to figure out these neat little puzzles. And you have to get your mind into this sort of silly way of thinking. What a really cool concept. What a really cool game, cool production, beautiful artwork. I'm fired up about this. This is really, really neat. I'm digging this game and I am definitely going to get a game put together to play this. I love the way this works. Great Minds came up with this one. Labyrinth, what a cool game. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.